All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to be setting up a stream. Now, you can think of streams as simply just endpoints for the API you're working with. Obviously, every API has an endpoint. Streams is just how we identify that exactly. So what we're going to do here is create a stream by clicking this plus button. And now we have two text fields, one being the stream name, as well as the URL path to that stream. Now, if you remember, we have our base URL up here. And what the URL path is going to be is just the endpoint. And once this is all set up on the connector side, when we're making that call to this endpoint, it'll actually make the request with the base URL and then append the URL path after. So it all will come together once we create this connector and publish it. So the API for Stripe has a couple different endpoints. The one I want to tackle first is going to be customers. Now, if we click the customers tab, we have a couple different endpoints here with their correct modes, but we're going to be doing the overall customers endpoint where we get all customers. Now, what I can do here is copy this endpoint here, go back to the connector builder and paste that here. And obviously the stream name is just an identifier for us on this side. So I will just use the customers as the stream name. Now I'm going to go ahead and create this. And what we see here is a list of different options that we have available to us. We have the URL path that we've already entered, but obviously this can be edited later on if you want. We have the HTTP method. So this can either be a get or a post. You have your record selector and primary key, which are completely optional. If you scroll down a little bit more, we have way more options where we can add query parameters, request headers, and request bodies to add a little bit more customization to our call in case we need any more specific data. You also have pagination, incremental sync. You can add parent streams, parameterized requests, error handlers, and transformations. So there's a lot that we can do for each individual stream that we create for this connector on the connector builder. We're going to keep it fairly simple for now, though. We're going to leave it as is, and I'm going to actually use the test option at the top right here. Now, if you remember in the last video, we added these testing values with the API key. So if I go ahead and click test, we're going to make a call to the V1 customers endpoint. And as you can see in this payload, we're actually getting back the full object with the list of customers that is in our data set, as you can probably say, in the uh, you know developer section. So if we go to customers, we have Justin Chow, William Johnson, Patricia Miller, and that is synonymous with the payload that we've gotten back on this right hand side. So you can see the records as well as the request, the actual request that was made uh, with the base URL as well as the append URL path for this endpoint, the headers that we injected, you can see the response here and as well as the declared or the detected schema. So that's also very important here is that based off of the payload, we actually detect schema per endpoint. And so if you click this declared schema, we've automatically imported that detected schema. So now we know exactly what to expect for the customer's endpoint. You can see that, you know, we have the items, the properties, balance, type created, so on and so forth and, and all of its actual types and data types. So that's also a very cool feature when it comes to the streams. Now that we've properly set up this stream, let's get into a little bit more advanced configuration for this endpoint. 